Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here and today we're going to mount an aircraft above the harbour area and I've chosen the Expedition Balloon set 5956 from 1999. So as I say this is the Expedition Balloon this is set 5956 from 1999 it came with 175 pieces and retailed for $20. I'm not sure if it was for sale in the UK at the time, but um, anyway, suffice to say, this is a very rare set nowadays. It's quite hard to get hold of. I was looking for one for absolutely ages on eBay that was uh, appropriately priced because these things tend to go for about £100 for even the worst example uh, up from there. And I wasn't really prepared to pay that sort of money. So I had to keep waiting until one was inappropriately labelled or just didn't garner the interest that it should have. So I managed to get mine for about £60, which is still arguably quite a lot for what you get. But it's that scarcity. And the fact that at the time I was considering building a Zeppelin uh, out of Lego and it's not something that's easily done, quite frankly, getting this shape uh, accurately. So when I discovered this, because I wasn't immediately aware of it, uh, I just thought this was much, much better. So I was really glad I got it. And the reason why mine was so cheap was partially because it was incomplete, but it was only missing parts that were either easily replaceable or just didn't really matter. So I've only got three of the four minifigures that came with the set. The fourth one being the sort of villain who's running away, who they're chasing. Uh, and the small additional build, which is just a bit of scenery, basically. So that wasn't included either. Uh, and there was a couple of sort of minor pieces that were missing, um, but they were very easily sourced and replaced. And I think that's really important when you look on something that's rare on eBay or any other site for that matter. As long as the important bits are there, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, obviously in this set, the important bit is the balloon. That's the most important bit. So it shouldn't be damaged. It should have all its stickers in a reasonable uh, state of repair, which this one does. And then for this one, I would say other rare pieces include these panel pieces with the round window in, possibly this windscreen, for example, and they're going to be the ones that are really hard to replace. Whereas, although this is old grey and old dark grey, some of those pieces are still easy to find. And things like these black uh, Technic pieces here and some of the more standard blue pieces are just going to be very easy to source new if, if you needed. So, look out for a deal is the top tip there. Now, I absolutely love this set because it's kind of a it's kind of a silly set in a way and that yes it's based on a zeppelin and this zeppelin's got its own face with this great big shark mouth sticker and these two eyes and that's really good fun with the adventurers sticker on the side um but i think what i like about it also is it's kind of like an all-terrain vehicle and at the bottom has got wheels it's also shaped like a boat so it almost looks like it could land on water and it's got these two propellers at the back which perhaps are authentic and obviously they spin and it just it just looks like a bit of a fantasy vehicle which is why I like it and we seem to have sort of three relatively old school uh, crew members from yesteryear and they've even got a skull in the back maybe they've taken that Indiana Jones style from some native somewhere and they've got a magnifying glass in blue there on the ledge a map magnifying glass rifles and swords and so on. I just think it makes for a fantastic scene. Now originally this set was sold with all the pieces contained within this balloon piece and even now this back piece screws or pulls off and all the pieces were contained in there and it's easy to put this back on. Let's put it on straight. There we are. And it isn't, as you can see, completely rigid it is bendable so I think if you were not very careful with this you could easily give it one of those horrible 
marks where plastic's been bent too far. And as for the stickers, you've got some lovely ones on the tail fin. And I did have to move these using my patented hot tea technique to get them in a better position from the position I inherited. And then obviously this is Venture sticker, lots of patchwork stickers showing that this balloon's been through the wars. Obviously the two eyes and the mouth and it's not great in that this corrugated surface hasn't taken the stickers particularly well in that whoever stuck them originally sort of had the sticker going across between the two ridges rather than sticking it firmly into the gap or maybe just with age it came up off that area. So although this isn't perfect, it's one of the better ones I've seen. It's clean, it's not got loads of dirt underneath it and the fact that it's not in contact as you can see all the way so there for example along doesn't actually detract from how it looks and there's the other adventurous sticker and a few more patches and the other tail another thing i love about this set is the anchor which also suggests that it does go in the water uh, or at least it's a land anchor for when they just want to stay in one place or maybe come to a stop. But it's on this really long chain that, of course, it could be tied up here or something. But I quite like the idea of this dangling, perhaps taking out random bits of buildings as they go past, because it is a bit of a comical um, ship, as I, as I said earlier. Another interesting thing is the way that these two parts are attached to each other. So we've got these uh, Technic support arms and the only way they're held on is through these old aerial pieces that are just basically skewering one of the holes, if I can get one out. They're just those pieces, those aerial pieces just going into a hole on the bottom of the balloon from both sides. So they're kind of going in like that just to hold through a tube hole. I was considering replacing the original figures with some more modern figures, perhaps from the series minifigures, including things like the Dino Hunter Girl and so on. But I think these figures are actually quite good fun. So I've decided after a bit of consideration to keep these and I'll show you them now. So first of all, as the pilot, we've got Harry Kane, not the footballer, I presume. And he's got his goggles, so very good there. Next, we've got the, the star of this range of sets, which is a uh, Johnny Thunder, who's a bit of a mean guy with a pistol in his belt, a rifle and sword. And then last but not least, Dr. Charles Lightning, who's got fantastic beard and whiskers, glasses, and he's got a map, a magnifying glass. I always like the fact that they are actual real magnifying glasses, the Lego ones. And I've given him this huge, huge backpack because I kind of like the idea of these eccentric old explorers going completely prepared for every eventuality and completely laden down with far too much kit. And I've even given him a modern machete uh, in that backpack. And he's got his own sort of colonial era hat. I think he's my favorite. And although this is a very swooshable and flyable um, model, I think that I'm going to have to have this uh, firmly held up from the floor because it's got a bit of weight to it and it's got an odd center of gravity being quite near the back in that a lot of this stuff is overhanging the back and it's quite heavy so i'm going to be mounting it on a great number of one by two by five transparent bricks i like these the best because as you can see head on you can barely notice they're there and it's the best way of holding up a model from the ground obviously you can suspend uh, crafts from the ceiling as well but I think if you're low flying like this balloon will be that these are your best bet. Right 
So I'll put these minifigures back in and then we can take it back up to the Lego room. And here we are with the Adventurer's Zeppelin in position. Looks pretty good if you ask me. I've mounted it on top of the El Dorado Fortress using 14 of the 1x2x5 transparent clear bricks. That is quite a few and they are about 50 pence each but they are available from Lego Bricks and Pieces direct. So you can get nice new ones that aren't scuffed up. And they really look the business because they barely show unless you really look at them. The other good features are the anchor hanging down there, just missing the taller tower of the El Dorado Fortress. And we've got all the crew turned around so they're facing us so we can see into the cockpit, see those engines at the back and watch it sailing off on its adventure. Needless to say, the walls aren't there in my actual city. The city continues on beyond the boundaries of the room, but we've got to have a limit to this city somewhere. So it's, it's heading out of town and we'll soon lose sight of it. Really happy with that. So as always, thank you very much for watching. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we'll be looking at a tutorial build for an ISO tank container. See you next time.